Uh, my name is Nick Claxton. Um, I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. I'm 20 years old. I was just drafted by the Brooklyn Nets. And, you know, a few years ago, well, a lot of years ago, I was in y'all's shoes. Yeah, you know, I'm a young OG now, so. Nick Claxton has grown leaps and bounds offensively. Sometimes I got to pinch myself. He's actually, you know, made it and, and doing well. We just uh, enjoying the moment and hoping for the best. I'm excited for this year to go out and, and show what I got. I'm Nick Claxton from Greenville, South Carolina to Brooklyn. Growing up in Greenville, honestly, I loved it. It's a pretty small town, but it's not too small. It's really a close-knit community. I definitely take a lot of pride in being from Greenville, South Carolina. So I wear that on my sleeves everywhere I go. Sports always played an integral part in my life. Just my dad, honestly, he had basketballs all around the house. He kind of brainwashed me and I just picked it up and fell in love with it. From a young age, he used to uh, kind of lay on my chest and drink his chocolate milk and watch basketball games with me. And he would just pretty much stay still. I mean, he wouldn't move around and just be very attentive at a young age for basketball. Honestly, it's just a sports culture in our household. Like, even little sister Carmen, she's playing basketball now. So just grow up around it, you're going to end up playing it and loving it. Me and my brother Chase, we competed every day at everything we did, whether it was 2K, whether it was going outside, playing. It used to get crazy. Like, my parents would be arguing over when I'm going to come in crying. Not if, but when. Me and Charles would just be like patiently waiting, okay, okay. And sooner or later, Chase would come in the house crying because Nicholas was either picking at him or had beat him. I think that's definitely where both of us get our competitive spirit from today. Always being competitive, but at the end of the day, it's all love, a whole bunch of tough love. Eighty-five, eighty-six. That's when I really started playing basketball, and earned a scholarship at University of Georgia. Played in uh, Europe for a few years. Played a little bit with uh, Boston Celtics. That was very uh, helpful when you know dealing with Nicholas and kind of know what he has to go through. I just know he was a dog, he was extremely competitive, and that's definitely where I get that from because he instilled that in me at an early age. His dad coached him until he got to ninth grade. Throughout those formative years, it was really good that he had dad uh, coaching him because, see, Nicholas was a really lanky kid, but he wasn't overly tall for his age, but he was really lanky. So what dad did, he honed in on guard skills. He didn't want me to just be one dimensional. He wanted me to be able to hoop, be able to play anywhere, any position on the court. He definitely held me accountable to the highest standard, whether it was in practice, especially in the games. He was really hard on me, but that prepared me for high school and college and really just in life. You know, it's not it's not always gonna be easy, but you know, having him always hold me accountable, especially on the court. It was big for me and it really helped catapult me to where I am today. About 14 years ago, Nick uh, showed up one of my men I call Kitty Camps. And he was uh, about six foot, wore goggles, knee, knee pads, and eighth grader. You know, this kid's going to have an opportunity, especially when I saw his dad walking in the gym. I said, you know, over time he's going to grow. As a high school freshman, I was six foot tall. And my ninth grade to 10th grade summer, I hit a, a big growth spurt. I remember him coming back that summer and he had to duck to come into my office. I said, God, you answer my prayers. So I was like, whoa, right now, now the game's changing a little bit. Uh, and he, you know, you already knew he had the work ethic. That was the thing that set him apart early is he, he's gonna play hard. And then the skill just started coming, shots started coming, and then he just put it all together. I owe a lot to my dad because, you know, I didn't know that I would be 6, 11, so. He was always big on just making sure that I was working on my guard skills, putting me in the gym with the right people, working on my offhand, working on shooting, so that I'm not just a one-dimensional big. The guard skills really come into play when he's six, 
eight, six, ten, and able to handle the ball a lot of times like a point guard. I would say it helped him, but it also hindered him because with his growth spurt, he started having a lot of back issues. As you said, growing pains. Managing my growth spurt was definitely tricky. My knees were hurting a lot. I think I took one summer off where I just worked out. Never got discouraged when I couldn't really jump because I was in so much pain. I just stuck with it and I'm here. Oh, come on. I'm off. I'm off. Oh, another one. How you going to bed? All right, we got three. Three. Oh, we in the backyard, the infamous backyard. This is where we used to get it in at. Sun up to sundown. We used to hoop out here. Me, my brothers, my cousins, my friends. So we used to get it in. It was it was always real competitive, and honestly, every time Chase he would go in and cry. So I mean, yeah, as a child, I I never I never really asked him though why would you do that? Why would you do that? I mean I don't know something about losing don't sit right on me. Never <laughs> it never has, but I done been able to control myself a little bit yeah, better, way better. But so, like I still be equally as mad when I lose, honestly. Just learn how to tame it. Yeah. yeah. When the Knicks start playing the legacy. It was pretty up and coming school, and we kind of took a chance on legacy for academics and basketball wise, and it's worked out big time. I'm extremely grateful for legacy because I'm homegrown and I was able to stay here, you know, 15 minutes down the street and play against the best competition in the U.S. on a night to night basis. He had a real strong work ethic. Nick was one of these kids getting in. The gym at five o'clock in the morning. Sometimes you know, want to get extra reps. Stay, coming in early, staying late, uh, trying to come in on the weekend so he could uh, master his craft. Ninth grade, Nick took his summer off just to work out, and I thought that was pretty strange. And I had never heard anything like that. But Coach Clyde knew what he was doing. Um, he came back a different guy. I was just able to just branch off and be free and liberate myself. I think so. That was big for me. Before the summer off, you know, he was always good. He would always make like the right play or he always had like a, a higher basketball IQ than most. But when he took the summer off and came back and really worked on his game, he was he was dominant. Like he, he took the game over. He enforced his will on the game. Like he you, you felt his presence. Life just changed as far as his recruiting, the interests that he had. Him going to Legacy, they play at a higher level of competition than most high schools around here too, so it's like he's already getting tested for the next level already, and so him killing here, it was just a, a sign that like, yeah, he's ready to go to the next level. With Nick's growth and development, his recruitment took off. Uh, of course, Georgia, you know, they was heavily involved, especially with his uh, parents going to school there. You know, he grew up hour and a half away from Athens, so he attended a lot of games. Georgia was huge, like we, we bleed red and black. You know, just growing up, always seeing Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. I just felt at home when I took my official visit there. We said we were gonna kind of be hands off because we didn't want to force him to attend the school even though we attended the school. I mean, he really did some soul searching because he knew that it was gonna be something that he was gonna have to do himself. He made the decision and his dad, of course, made him call the other schools. And then his last phone call was to Georgia. The commute was perfect. It wasn't too close, it wasn't too far. My parents were able to come to every single home game. Those years were just, we just had an awesome time driving to his games. We would go to all the home games, being able to see him with that G on his chest. And dad's number. Like, just a, just a perfect storm, right? I'm happy that's where I ended up going. I, I have a lot of love for the University of Georgia. You know, going through the draft process, each workout got a little better, kept getting uh, positive feedback. And he decided, he said he wants to start the clock with his NBA career. When his name finally got called, it was just like a surreal moment, like your lives have changed forever. To see the Jordan, his mom, and his dad, his eyes, his family, and having his whole family there, now you know it's real. Brooklyn, just know that I'm ready to get to work every single day, and the best is only yet to come. Hey! What? What? Y'all gotta get out of court! You tired? 
<laughs> hey, somebody gotta get a stop. Somebody gotta get a stop. Come on, y'all gotta y'all gotta turn it around. Look, y'all getting whooped. No, that's us winning. No, y'all losing. No, we not. They losing. We winning. All right. All right. This was always a, a very important thing that we wanted to do to try to have this camp. And this is our second year. We do have like a GPA requirement. So it's just been really, really nice being able to offer this free camp for the kids. How did my parents feel? I mean, I'm, I'm sure they were proud of me, like they always are. Um, but, you know, the thing about, you know, my parents, they always, it don't matter what I do. It's, it's always love, but I'm sure, you know, when I don't know LeBron, I'm sure they was turned, for sure. Yeah. They're hosting this camp. One, he's coming back home. It gives him an opportunity to spend time with his family and friends, but also gives him an opportunity to sit down with kids who look up to him. I know if my 14-year-old self, if we had a, a camp similar to this one with a player that actually made it to the NBA, I would enjoy that. So it's my duty to make sure that I give back to the community and just showing that anything is possible and let the chips fall where they may. Brooklyn is a melting pot. It's a special borough. The culture here is definitely one of one. There's a real sense of pride. I mean, you can just be walking down the street and a random person will come up to you and say, oh, you need, to, you need to do this, you need to do that, like as if they're an expert. But, you know, you respect that and that's just a part of what comes with playing basketball in New York City. Turn back by Claxton. Do not go in there. Nick Claxton, the weight room is paying off. What got me here was just playing every single possession, bringing intensity, and I'm the anchor of the defense. So really just taking on that challenge and listening, taking constructive criticism and going out and applying. Claxton on the move. Claxton crosses and scores. Nick Claxton getting into his swag bag. Looking like he was playing at Georgia again, running the home. Just trying to get back to young Clax. It's something I continue to work on, and I still have it, and nobody can stop me in open court. That was Nick before he hit his growth spurt. You know, he was a little point guard, you know, running around with guys like my size for a little bit, and then he hit this incredible growth spurt, and then he had to turn into a four or five man. But I, I have simple advice for him tonight. I said, if we're not seeing you play like that as hard offensively and defensively, then we got to hold you accountable to that standard. We want him to keep it up, but now at this point, as a young player in the league, he has to show consistency. And, um, we got to be right there with him. Six eleven guys who can do what he does don't just fall off trees walking around the street here. So Nick, you know, wanting to come back here and you know us finding that middle ground where he's happy, the team shows a commitment to him. That speaks a lot, it speaks volumes. It's fun to have a guy like that, to have him in the middle of your development program and say, okay, where do we take this? He's got all these intangibles, he's got the length, we saw how he could go. And you know, there's a chip on Nick's shoulder and he, he's mentioned it quite a few times. I think he knows he hasn't even scratched the surface of the player that he's capable of becoming. Claxton gathers and powers it home, plus the foul. It is very obvious that he has taken a leap. And he's been terrific. Clax's energy is always key to our success. Is he on the boards? Is he protecting the rim? Is he running the floor? You know, so you see the progression in Nick, and uh, we're going to need him to continue that going forward. Physical and emotional growth from game to game. The physical piece is being able to be a decision maker. And then the emotional part is being a starter in this league and being counted on every single night and, and answering the bell. So, uh, pretty impressive by Nick. He knew what he wanted to do. He knew what he wanted to be at an early age. So he, he set that to be his goal and then he reached it. And he's not coasting. He didn't get there and, and chill. He still works every day. And I, I think that's, I commend him for that. Sometimes it doesn't seem real that this has happened. You know, I just thank God that he has this opportunity and he has really just 
excelled and, and, and relished in the moment. And he's just, you know, of course, thankful every day for the opportunity that has been given to him. I just feel a lot more comfortable, a lot more confident in myself. Um, all, everything that I've had to overcome over these past few years, uh, that's the reason for that. And you always got to come out and just have that chip on your shoulder. And for me, it's just having that underdog mentality every time that I step on the court, whether it's in practice, whether it's in the game, and just proving to myself that I'm the one.